Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Can't hardly stand it. Don't you just love my little plates? How fun is that? If you do it wrong a couple times, you'll get used to it. Is that cute or what? <laughs> oh, so I missed. Oh my gosh, I'm just in love with this. <sighs> Owie. Wanna smell that? Ooh. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So glad you're here. It's a rainy day here. JJ's here with me, and I'm going to be working with some aluminum cans. These are already cut, and as you can see, the edges aren't bad. I rinse them out after I cut them, and I save them like this. I do have a video where I show how I cut them. I'll add it here somewhere, down there or up there. I'm not quite sure. What I did with these was make them into tiles for your ceiling, or not for your ceiling, but vintage tiles, like they used to do ceilings. These are tiny though, see? They're tiny, and they're all made out of cans. And then I did other things to them. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. And you can add them to collages. Here's a collage that I used one in. Of course, I don't have the collage anymore, I sold it. And I miss it, I miss my collages. They're like my children, but I had to let them go. These I'm making to use in collages or in journal pages. So I'm gonna show you those, okay? So these are the tiles for ceiling and I'm going to attach them to each other so that they aren't really any more like a tile ceiling. Now what you could do, if you wanted to attach these to a piece of cardboard or a page, you could put them on here and then you could take a brad just punch holes however you punch them punch them punch them punch them this one's a really tiny hole i think i need a bigger one okay this one and i've already marked where i want the holes because i never seem to put them where i want them unless i mark it first you know i eyeball it and then i blow it so i'm putting them right where i want them it's easier to mark them ahead of time. Okay. Okay, so we have to work on something to get it off of there. <laughs> it's easier with these though. Although this tool drives me crazy. It's got so much going on. I said to myself, I need to just sit down and get used to this thing. I'm still not used to it. But I know it doesn't hold on to the metal like the littler ones do. Okay, where are you? I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, so I missed. Yeah, I just can't get used to that thing. So one, two, three, four. One more. What the? Okay. One more. Oh, my goodness. Okay, it really isn't this difficult usually. You just get your tweezers or whatever and you just loosen it. So here is one, and I already made holes in another one. Which one? Here it is. You can take brads if you want, little tiny brads, and puncture through the page, which I'm not gonna do because I'm not sure I wanna do this. Let's see, let's just take a piece of a scrap. Here's a, this is a, it looks like a ceiling. Okay, so you could just do that, right? And then you just puncture it through the paper. But look how cute they look. Okay, how cute is that? If you wanted to connect them, you can overlap them. So you can overlap them or you can just put them next to each other. Let's try overlapping them. And then I'll show you what I used to make these. And one of these is longer than the other, so it's supposed to be super easy. It's been a long time since I used these, I guess. They're not working for me. What? Oh my goodness, there we go. All right. Okay, so we're gonna just put I'll just show you quickly. Put this through the hole in this one, and then through the hole in that one, right? Because these are actually rectangular, they're not square. Pretty sure vintage tiles were square. That's okay, we're gonna overlap them. And we're not making a ceiling, we're just getting it to look like a vintage ceiling. Is this giving me such a hard time? You have to line them up, <laughs> line them up, and then turn it over, and there you go. Oh my goodness, really? Okay, so see how you get them to line up? 
How cute is that? Right? And then one more over here. So we are using the brads. Okay, four there. And then you can make another one and you can just look how pretty that is. You can make it as long as you want. You could make it into a belly band because you can just slide something right in there. See, look at that. Sure, sure, belly band. How about double pockets, right? Double pockets where you go one in here and then one in here. So you could have double pockets made out of these. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's one way to use them. What I wanted to show you though, was this that I made. By folding it, really simple. You just fold in the bottom and it's rectangular. So I'm gonna take the shorter ends. Doesn't matter, however you like it. Making the pocket bottom, right? Press it down. And then you can leave it like that and make a pocket. Or on this one, I fold that down and I'm gonna show you how to attach this same way pretty much, but we're gonna use something different. I think I'm gonna just make little tiny holes. Let me see how that works. This is a really teensy hole. Of course, if you don't have this teensy hole maker, make bigger holes. So, oh, that's a perfect size hole. And did you see how it didn't stick? I love that. So we did our last grocery shopping for the year today because it's New Year's Eve. So we got some special things for the new year. And I'm sharing with you right now that I am going on my diet. I will be having my last hurrah tonight. I bought my favorite pie. Have you ever had Marie Callender's coconut cream pie? Oh, it's so good. But also, I discovered in the summer that there is a fabulous pie made by Walmart and it's a peanut butter pie, a peanut butter cream pie. It's to die for, but it's hard to find. So whenever we go to the store, we check to see if they have it. Good thing they don't always have it because we love it. I think I bought it twice, two or three times. Um, we had it as a birthday cake for George when we were in our RV visiting our kids and he has always just loved peanut butter pie, chocolate cake with peanut butter frosting. His mom used to always make that for his birthday. So that is something special to him. So yeah, we had that. But they didn't have that one. So I got my favorite Marie Callender's coconut cream, no bake pie. So let's try this one on that paper that I used before to show you how to connect this one. Now it's not rocket science, obviously. We're going to be using the brads again, but I wanted to show you. Did I make a hole down there? I wanted to. I wanted to. I thought I did. Nope. I'm gonna make a hole down the bottom as well, right there. Okay, so I have one, two, three holes, okay? And I'm gonna attach the bottom one with the brad. And that will hold it to the page or whatever you wanna attach it to. You could put it on a card too, wouldn't that be cute? Okay, and then in these two little holes, it's gonna be two things. Hopefully the brad will still fit after I do this. So I have this thing of copper wire. Got it from George. I don't know if I stole it from the garage or he just let me have it. This thing weighs a ton. So I'm gonna use some of that. And these scissors are amazing. I told you, they cut everything. So I'm gonna take a piece of this, cut it about, let's see. Well, maybe five inches, and let's see how good of a measure that was. <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, it's more like seven inches. Wow, I was way off. So I would say probably, let's see how this works. But anyway, I'm going to put this wire through the hole. Okay, and we're just going to twist it a few times. And through this hole, I'm going from the front to the back. I do not know why. Um, it looks like you probably could make the wire oh, probably uh, six inches. I have a lot left over because I don't want that handle that long. So then I'm just twisting it around here again. And then I'll cut that off. And you can then crimp that so that it doesn't hurt anybody. These are just some needle nose pliers. Just gonna crimp that around, okay, like that. And this one, because knowing me, I'll pinch myself and be like, I should have fixed that. Lazy bones. So let's fix it now, not be lazy. Crimp it. Crimp. Crimp, crimp. Crimp. Okay. Look how cute that is. Is that cute or what? So you have this adorable little basket. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do the brads, just like before. Oh, so cute. Okay, so we have this adorable little basket. And if you wanted to, you could put a little tag off it or whatever you want to do. And then you can put something in there. Anything you want. It's for your, you know, if it's a card, you could put, you know, roll up some money and put it in there. Why not, right? That would be great. If you have these little hearts, I have these little metal hearts. I can pretend they're going in there and just kind of put them like they're coming out. How cute is that, right? Very cute. Or, and I'll show you how I made these. Or, I have these little dry roses from my garden. They're really cute. Let me show you. These are the dry roses. I just cut them in my garden. I hang them upside down until they dry. Aren't they pretty? So these you could stick in there. Of course, something like this, you wouldn't want to crush inside of a of an album of any kind of journal. So this would be great. Oh my gosh, it's so cute, you can't hardly stand it. You could put this on the cover of a journal. You can uh, make a special gift for someone. Put this on it as a little extra gift. Oh my gosh, I'm just in love with this. I love it. And I have also coated my flowers in, in um, matte medium or matte gel. I've coated them and used them in art pieces. Trying to find one. Trying to find one. Oh, here's some. Oh, yeah. You're getting all my recipes today. <laughs> Here I've made these. Okay. Here's, a, here's some little rose buds and leaves. They are coated in matte medium. They're coated. Can you see how shiny they are? I coated them in matte medium. Now they won't, you know, they're still gonna get crunched. But if you wanted to put it in something that, you know, the person could save, this one might be coated. Hmm, I think it is. All right, so yeah, you can put these coated ones in there. Like this. And they're a little sturdier. These are coated, 
And these are opened a bit more and I'm just destroying these just for you. <laughs> just for you guys, I am. You know, so I can, I could just, I'm gonna, this is cute. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna be crazy. Beautiful, beautiful. This one's just a bud. This one's just right upside down. But you know, put put three. Three is always a good number, right? Always. Three is always good. Always good. So pretty. So, so pretty. All right, so we got that. Get rid of my roses. You just want to be careful of all the little pieces of metal that you chop off or punch out. Let me just show you what I have here. Okay, you don't want to leave these on the floor. Middle of the night, walking in your studio to, because you can't sleep, <laughs> and step on one of those. <gasps> Owie! Go in the garbage. Don't you just love my little plates? Look at this one. I find them in in thrift stores or in, uh, yard sales and I just love these little plates. They make me so happy. Okay, so we did that. And one more thing that I made is this. Now this is made out of soda can again. And I've got a little piece of uh, watercolor paper that I painted with um, water, liquid watercolors. I have a video on those. A lot of fun and very brilliant. I love the way they come out. And then I used, well, shh, the secret. I didn't tell you yet how I made the color. You might've already figured it out, but this is a dye. And here it is. This is, this, I got it for a dollar. Sizzix, it's either a mirror or a frame. It's called frame number two. So when I punch that out, I'll show you how I do that. So all of these were made with my Sizzix machine. And this one is a Visage, uh, Vintage, Visage, Vintage Big Kick. The Big Kick, it's the same as the Big Shot. It's just called, they say the only difference is where you buy it, but I got that, I got that online. I think it was on Amazon years ago. So it's the same thing, you can tell. Sizzix, Big Shot, Big Machine, Big Machine, and it uses Bigs dies. This is called a Bigs die. It has the it has cutting blades ma uh, in in it, so as it goes through, the blades come up and they cut, and these will cut metal. Years ago, I did wreaths uh, classes making poinsettia wreaths out of them, flower wreaths. Oh yeah, butterfly wreath, so cool, and people just really enjoyed doing it. That was a long time ago. He's still teaching classes, but I haven't done any of that in a while. So now what we're going to do is learn how to cut. So I have my cans, and I've already cut something out of this one. So I can show you first. Let's do the frame. Okay. So the first thing you do when you're making any of these things is you cut the shape first. The reason you want to cut the shape first is because if you cut, if you emboss it first when you go, run it through to cut it the embossing gets flattened and you don't want to do that so with a bigs die all you need is a cutting mat and your bigs die and another cutting mat that's it there's no other layer to the sandwich we call it a sandwich that you put together to run through your machine and if you've ever done this this is not new to you and i bet a lot of you have done this and if you haven't, well, there's probably a ton of videos showing this on YouTube, but I'm, you know, showing you pretty much. Cutting mat, big sty, another cutting mat, and the metal or whatever you want to cut on top of your shape. So you want to make sure your metal fits over the shape. And you also, you want to put the side that you want to show face down. So that's and I'll show you why when this gets cut. So I'm going to do that. Put the other layer over it and just run it through my machine. 
And you can hear the click and the clack. That's just the cutting. It's cutting the metal. This is the piece from the center of the frame, right? And we're going to save that because guess what we're going to use this for? I bet you can't guess. <laughs> and then we have this. These two little pieces, unless you want to use them to make a something else with them. That might be cool, but I have been throwing them away because they're you just don't want those things laying around. And look, look what we got, a heart. So that goes in my heart bowl. The heart gets cut out up here, see? And here's one more shape down here, very sharp, goes in the garbage. I want you to know, if you ran your finger along here, you probably could cut your finger, but I've literally cut out thousands of leaves and petals and things and cut myself maybe twice. And that was just because I jammed my finger into a sharp edge. Now notice how this has that nice rounded, uh, what we call that, um, beveled edge. That's because this is the right side. So like I said, you wanna put the right side down so when it gets cut, it gets the nice beveled edge. Notice the back has like the opposite shape. And for most things, it's not gonna matter. But for some, you're gonna really wanna have it right. See how it has this little edge in here and in here? It really looks good. So make sure that you put it, the part that you want to cut, face down, okay? So there's our mirror. Now, I'm gonna show you how to emboss, okay? There's all kinds of embossing folders. The one that I, I just bought recently, though, is called, a three-dimensional embossing folder. So what it has is one side is very deep, it's thicker, so it's kind of like etched in more. And then when you close it, you get a beautiful three-dimensional design, right? All right, so what we do with this though, we need more help because this isn't thick enough. So we're gonna put the, some of these have like a book of the different platforms and they call them page this, page that, page A, A or B. This is the base and the and the solo shim. That's the plastic, like really thin plastic one that attaches to the base layer. And the great thing is they have pictures on every layer to show you what you can cut with that layer when you add it. And then this is the solo thin adapter and I'm sure it's called something else. Um, this is just for this machine. I don't know about any other one. This is the one I have. Of course, I used to have the Tim Holtz electric one that looked like a suitcase, but I jammed it and ruined it. <laughs> I mean, it was like almost $300. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be what I work with from now on because I can't handle that. I tr experimented too much, I guess. I'm just, all right, whatever. So then this, always you have this, okay? Or was that not? I think we don't use the bottom one. This takes the place because it's so thick. So this takes the place of the bottom one. We're all going to pray I'm right. Okay, so we're going to take the mirror, okay? And we're going to put it in here. And you want it to be where you can tell it's going to pop out. So this, in this case, this is upside down. I'm not really worried about where I put it for this. Then a cutting mat. And then we run it through, right? Nope, too much stuff. Oh, I think I don't need this. Do I need this? I think it's just this. Okay, let's try that again. Put this over this <laughs> and run it through. I think that might be right. Yeah. All right, so all you need is this thin plastic. And you can see here on that piece, if I was paying attention, that it shows you how to use it with um, embossing folder. Now these weren't these weren't invented yet when this was made. So I kind of had to play around, but look how pretty that is. See, so you've got the right side of the first cut we did when we die cut it. And then we have the embossing where it's popping out. This side, the embossing is the opposite. It's like dug in. So you always wanna think about it Sometimes it'll twist your brain, but if you do it wrong a couple times, you'll get used to it. So that's a beautiful frame, okay? And it's just like this frame, almost. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I made these little tiles. So now we have that cut out from the mirror. So if you just wanna cut a bunch of these, you can just, um, you can always use less. If you have a smaller piece of like metal left over like this, I'll tell you what I do. I cut most of it off because it's just in the way. Throw it in the garbage can, not on the floor. So I've got this piece left. And notice I'm staying away from those edges. There's no reason for my hand to go there. Face down. So this is what you can do if you don't need the mirror. You have a smaller piece left over. You don't have to feel like you've got to make the whole mirror. You can just, or frame. You can just use this to get that rectangle out of the middle. I'll just do that. You always want to make sure you have the cutting mats on the top and bottom of wherever your shape is. In there. See, this isn't use, useful. And then I just take this and I tap it into the garbage, right over the garbage can. I just don't want anybody stepping on pieces of this stuff. So here I have what I need. So now I have two of those. I'm going to show you how I emboss them. So here is that two-piece mat, right? And then I'm going to take this special embossing folder. And what I did was I just found where I wanted to put each piece so that every piece of my ceiling tile was made the same, with the same thing centered. You want it centered. So then I put some marks here and here, here and here. I just, when I found where I wanted it, I just took a marker and I just ran it around the Sharpie, I just took it and I just went around the four corners and then I knew that's where I wanted every one. It's hard for me to see them, but I, if I tip it, I can see it. But I could go back with a white marker. So if you have a white marker, that might be a really good idea. Now I'm going to use a piece of masking tape. I, I tried using washi tape, but it really wasn't able to be, it wasn't really working. So I want this with that sticking out. Make sure I know boom, it's gonna go in there. So I want this metal to be in there. So I put the tape on the back side and I line it up with my little marks. One, two. I hope you get what I'm saying. You wanna make sure every tile has the same design if you're making them to, to attach to each other. Maybe you don't care, but I think it makes it look way more realistic is that the word I don't know if it's really realistic but you know reminiscent of a ceiling tile all right so then I have it where I want it and I close it and I run it through with one right isn't that what we decided one yeah just one boom and there we have it. How's that? Pretty cool, right? Notice this is centered. So then this piece of tape is actually, talk about being cheap, but I use this until it doesn't stick anymore. So I just stick it on the edge of my machine. So I go through those and I make a bunch of these. Okay, is there anything else I embossed that I wanted to show you? I don't think so. All right, so we'll move the machine over. And now we're going to do some inking. Now the inking is alcohol ink. And if you're anything like me, you have some. Perhaps you haven't used them. Hi, Jay. You have, maybe you haven't used them in a long time, but they're still good. I have so many, I used to, you know, because I teach classes, so. Because not only does it catch the ink, but you make a good piece of collage paper out of it when you do that. It's really awesome. Oops, piece of metal. How did that happen? All right. And here's one I did when I was inking those. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And then look, it got liquid on it. How fun is that? All right, so let's do this. And I made tool, special tool out of a cork. Doesn't have to be the real cork. It could be the rubbery one. And a piece of Velcro. You want the piece of Velcro with the teeth, that piece, and I cut pieces of felt into squares, 
and it's amazing. So I've made a bunch of them for classes. So everyone had their own tool. Cool, right? Okay, so we're gonna use, we're gonna do the mirror and we're going to use, okay, so here's my alcohol ink tin. Okay, and I've got all my tools in here. See, they're all in there. And here's the felt that I cut. And it's so much less expensive when you do it that way. So I wanted to use some, let's see, that, let's do green. I think maybe some green on the mirror. Green and blue. Let's do that. Okay. Put all this back on the floor. I'm going to use my little tool. I'm going to open my ink. Now, the thing with these inks is I have gotten where I've confused the covers and then you kind of mix the colors on top of there. So I put this over here, sailboat blue, put a little dot. Okay, that's sailboat blue. I'm going to put that on here first, just two or three dots or four. And I'm going to tap up and down over my mirror. And by tapping, I get a lot of texture. You can rub it, but it works better if you tap. This is pretty light green, blue. Bleh. All right, so let's do that. Oh, so much fun. And every time you hit the ink and reactivate it, it gives you texture. Then, all right, so there's the blue, right? And there's the green. I'm gonna put, obviously this is the green next to the blue. And now I dropped it and don't know which one is which. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna use the same little piece of felt and add the green. And I'm gonna go right over the blue. I'm using colors here that are analogous. They're next to each other on the color wheel. So they mix beautifully because blue makes green when you mix it with yellow. So there's our frame. Look how pretty that is. Isn't it gorgeous? Now I can add more blue and I want you to notice how this changes. It's giving me more texture the more layers I use. Like that? Like that, JJ? What am I doing, huh? I smell that? Ew. Alcohol. Okay. Okay, so here's the mirror. Okay. And, yep. It's made from a rear can. Now, this one is not textured, I just noticed. This is a plain one. So let's try the one that I embossed and see how different they might look. So we'll start with the blue again. And this would also be something good to put uh, gloves in the bottle gloves in a bottle um, in a bottle on your hands to keep the ink from penetrating your skin. Um, it, you can clean it off with alcohol, but a lot of them will stain, especially red and purple. So make sure, <laughs> of course I didn't do that. Um, you can either wear gloves, which I just don't like wearing gloves. They're too hot, they're cumbersome. I never wear gloves to do crafts, but the gloves in a bottle are great. And you can get them on Amazon, or I've even seen them in my pharmacy in Publix. All right, so that's the green. I'm gonna try adding yellow, why not, right? So this is yellow. Okay, yellow. And I'm gonna add some yellow. Now yellow's okay because it's the other color that makes green with the blue, right? So look at this, we're, we're lightening parts of it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna put more blue. Now what's interesting is when I did this one, I went ahead and added some yellow at the end, which is actually the complementary color to the purple. So let's try the complementary to this one. What is that? What is the complementary to green? Yes, it's the third primary, which is red. Now I have to go get some red. 
watermelon. There's different ones, of course, all the time. That's that's watermelon. So I'm going to add some to a piece, a clean piece of felt. I have a bag full that I cut. I'm going to add some red to that. And we're not going to go crazy and turn this brown. You could, but I'm just going to add the red here and there. And what it does is gives like a little bit of an accent color. Look at that. Fun, right? Yeah, got an accent color on there. I like it a lot. All right, so we did these two. Now we're going to do our ceiling tile. So I'm going to close these because we're not going to use the... Well, you know, my friend wanted me to try... My friend Carlene, she wanted me to try making a green one. So let's maybe make a green one, right? Um, I'm going to start with red. <laughs> that doesn't sound very logical. But, you know, what if, right? What if? Start with the red. And it's just red. Now, there's no two colors that make red. Red is a primary. You can't make red. So we'll start with the red. Let it dry. I'm going to add a little of the yellow, which is one of the colors that is in green. All right, so we'll add some of that. And so that's going to turn this into a really pretty, looks almost like melon color. It's going to give us an orange glow. So pretty. And then I'm going to add the green. So I'm going to change this. I don't know if that, what would happen if I put it on the same one, but just because I just want it to stay kind of green. I don't want it to mix with the red everywhere. Let this, and these dry really super quick because, you know, alcohol, you know, like when you clean, they clean your arm and they give you a shot, it doesn't stay wet. So now some green. So what's funny is I wanted this to be a green tile, but when you reactivate what's underneath, which happens every time you touch the, uh, alcohol to the color that was already there, you know, you're going to reactivate it. So this is looking green, but it's also looking vintage. So it turns out to be a vintage green tile. Look at that. Pretty? My goodness, that's pretty. All right, so we did that. And now I'm going to put all of my colors away. Well, this was the green. Try to get the same colors on the ones that were there. Only because it gets the color on the cover and it looks gross when you open it. So there. Okay. So that's that. We colored all of these pieces. I showed you how to use some of them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.